and welcome to Getting the Best Results podcast, where each week we talk about shortcuts or techniques that will help you get the best results in life and business. I'm your host, Cheryl Jones. I'm an author, facilitator, and professional speaker. My focus is on helping individuals and small businesses break through their common thinking to create bigger, bolder, better results. Now let's get on with this week's show. This week's guest is Susan Price. Susan helps companies meet their business goals by creating fantastic user experiences for their stakeholders, customers, prospects, partners, and employees. CEO and master strategist at Firecat Studio, Susan and her team help organizations build websites, apps, and marketing to create authentic connections and make money. Welcome, Susan. We're so glad to have you. Hi, Cheryl. I'm so excited to be here. I am so pleased that you're here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. My pleasure. Oh, awesome. Well, I want to get right into the content. I am, you know, very excited and I know you are too. And I really want to talk about what it is you have to bring to our our audience today. And I think it's real important that we start with a little bit about your background. What it tell us, you know, how you came to be the chief strategist and master of everything at Firecat Studio. I would love to talk about that just a little bit. Um, my secret is having smart friends. And oh. in, 19, in the early 90s, 1992, 93, the, this was back when Al Gore was, quote unquote, inventing the internet. The internet was being opened up to commercial development, especially the web. So um, I had several smart friends that told me this was coming and said it was important. Uh, I was already a graphic design firm and agency that did marketing materials for companies, but they were printed materials. Mm. We did a lot of desktop publishing type stuff. And then my smart friends were telling me, here comes this web thing, this is gonna be big. And I lived in Austin at the time, there was a lot of technology there and a lot of my clients were technology uh, based. So I jumped on very early and built my first website in 1993. It was horrible. (laughs) It was a nasty brochureware website, but it had images and text. And because I was used to designing print materials, it wasn't too bad, right? Mm -hmm. There were, there were uglier websites than the ones we were cranking out. (laughs) Um, But, and, and so I ended up writing a book with a with another couple smart friends. Uh, this book was in 1996. It was called the Web Graphics Source Book, where we were teaching people the difference between a JPEG and a GIF. And um, it came with a DVD ROM. No <laughs> kidding. For those things, like yes. you, you get to charge extra because it came with a DVD ROM in it. <laughs> so I had the really great good fortune of jumping in really early on a huge wave of technology. I had done the same trick riding the wave of desktop publishing and riding the wave of uh, personal computing even. And you might deduce from this that I have been around a while and that is true. But what I think it helped me do was these days, I, I see people like my son who is just graduating from college today They are thrust into a whole complex world of technology, and I had the the good fortune of being able to master it one new concept at a time. And so I have a good mental model of how it all works, and I have a whole lot of context for how it works. So what I do now is bring that experience and knowledge to bear and help companies decide what pieces of technology they need to leverage in order to meet their business goals and because I'm a good person and not a jerk most of the time I look for designing win-win situations not just for them to make money or meet their business goals we work with a lot of nonprofits but to meet the goals of their customers or their employees or their partners mm-hmm. so it, it's been a wonderful ride and I love working with folks like you because I think you have a mission 
of helping all of us be better in so many ways. So you're one of my favorite types of people to work with. Oh, thank you. Well, it's so funny when you were reminiscing about the, about um, 1992, 93, when, it, when the internet was born suppo- supposedly or whatever, or at least revealed to us. I remember um, somebody came up to me and said, Hey, we have this business opportunity for you. And I'm like, okay, and do you and your husband want to get on? And, and, and it wasn't a multi-level marketing thing. It was about the internet. It was about advertising on the internet. And I'm going, I don't understand what that is. What is the World Wide Web? <laughs> and I felt so dumb. And I just sat there and my eyes were glazed over and this guy kept talking. And, and he, was, he was definitely a techie and like you, an early adopter of things. And, and I'm like, like three meetings in, I'm like, okay, okay yeah, I, I think I want to be part of this new wave thing. I, I really want to try this, but I don't get this web thing. <laughs> And he, like everybody, it's a little spidery, right? Exactly. Well, everybody kind of went silent, and I, I surely I wasn't the only one. And there was only six, of, or yeah, there was seven of us total. And I felt like I was the idiot in the room asking the, the question, right? And he said, "Oh, okay." And then he explained, "Well, it is like a spider web, except for it's in multi dimensions, and <laughs> any part of it can talk to any other part of it." I'm like, "It's not a straight line." Yeah, it's all a straight line, but it's not a straight line. <laughs> It was, it was pretty funny, but yes, I think, you know, since I've known you, you are, you've always been a, um, a synthesizer of information, I think. And I think you're right. I think your background has given you a unique perspective that maybe other people that are just coming into it. I don't mean like just like graduating from college and maybe a degree in in computer science or whatever, but more like the not so experienced, been there through it as it's grown and changed and morphed. And, and you've been on that precipice everything, every time. And I think that's one of the things that um, gives you that strategic advantage. I, I, in, my, in my knowing you, at least that's what it feels like to me. Well, thanks. I do think that that has proved true for me. And I try to bring that to bear for my clients because there's so many choices to make. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking at, uh, a small business owner and they have all these different options and they have barrages of offers coming at them. Let me write blog posts for you. Why don't you start a podcast? You know, let's do email marketing campaigns. Why don't you do Google AdWords and you know, Facebook they, mar- ads or right, right, right. Yeah. right. And mm-hmm. there's, you know, and there's a lot of people showing up trying to help folks these days, but I'm happy to be one of them because I feel that I'm platform and channel agnostic. I look at the situation and, you know, I I do a lot of uh, talking to folks about what is it they want to do because you can do anything, right? You know this, if you get out of your own way, right, Cheryl, (laughs) you can do almost anything that you can envision, (laughs) but it's it's a matter of that, that just small matter of getting clear on what you want, you know, that's the trick. And, but back to what you said, it's too many choices and, you know, where I've run amok and you and I had a conversation last week when I was in the muck and, um, and I was up to my eyeballs and alligators. There were, there were too many choices and too many decisions to be made. And that is not my area of expertise. And so for people like me, who are trying to understand it, trying to make good decisions, you know, other business owners, just like me, trying to, trying to weigh out Facebook and LinkedIn and advertising and no advertising and snail mail and MailChimp. And, you know, where do you put your energy and time when you don't have enormous resources? Uh, You want, you know, it, it can be overwhelming. And, you know, I have been at that point way too many times Um, and trying to hire the right people to help me with those decisions. Definitely. And I think, you know, sometimes it's more of the strategic um, thinking, you know, if I can understand a strategy, I can make a whole lot better choices. I don't need people to say, Oh, you need to do that. You know, as a business owner, Um, that's where you have helped me out in the past is when we've sat down and discussed you know, and you were there with a whiteboard and, you know, and what about this? And then you put it on the whiteboard and have you thought about podcasting? Have you thought, okay, yeah, 
10 years ago, yes, you asked me about podcasting and I said, yes, I wanted to do it. And now we're doing it right now. It's just See? a little while to get here. <laughs> That's right. There's too much to be learned, but and do in the meantime. Um, but that, I think that, you know, strategy is really, really helpful. But let's get back to you and less about me and talk about your genius, because I think, you know, that's what this podcast is all about is, is sharing genius and, and hopefully offering some tips and ideas that are going to help other people, you know, as they're, as they're thinking about things. So what do you think your, how would you describe your, your gift, your genius, your uniqueness? So the way I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the genius term, and I bet many of your guests are, but I'll go with it. I'll play. Thank you. If I, if I have a genius, I think I would say it is seeing things from multiple perspectives. So I've done this ever since I was a tiny little girl, and I thought I was maybe going to be a novelist, because you know how a novelist has a point of view, and then they describe what's happening from sometimes a variety of different perspectives. Um, you can write a novel in first person, but it's kind of limiting because mm. you're stuck in that person's eyes and mind. Mm -hmm. And many of the, of the best novels move from and show things from a variety of perspectives, but just because you can understand a situation so much better. So I feel like it's related to folks who think they have intuition about people and their motivations. And to me, it's not necessarily a woo-woo, uh, otherworldly, you know, uh, psychic kind of ability. It's just being able to notice and then project yourself into their shoes and have empathy for them to figure out why are they behaving in a certain way or why are they saying what they're saying. And um, in my work, we call this user experience design. And one of the ways we get to is being very, very curious. So every time I meet with you, Cheryl, we always start with what is it you want to do? What do you want to have happen? And then I, I just start deconstructing and making a model in my mind of how that would work, not just for you, but mm -hmm. for your customers or your prospects or your partners, you know, or your employees or your team, right? So... Right. That's the skill set that, that I rely on, and it all stems from that seeing things from multiple perspectives and having empathy for those in a sort of cold-blooded, uh, analytical way. <laughs> cold-blooded. <laughs> it can be kind of cold-blooded, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I, well, yeah, you've, you've got a, a goal to reach. You've got a, something to accomplish. You're, you're trying to make something happen, right? Right. So you either want somebody to buy or somebody to give or somebody to invest or their time, whatever, you know, you're, you want something to happen when out of this experience. Right. And unless you're not going to be a jerk about it, if you're not going to just force people to do things your way, you're looking for that win-win situation between, you know, a company and its, and its prospects. Exactly. So. Yeah. And a lot of time when I say cold blooded, I have to be sort of stern or harsh with my clients. And I've learned to be a slightly more gentle about it. But sometimes I have to help them see that the way that they think they're perceived by their customers or their prospects isn't the way they are being perceived. And it's and mm -hmm. it's not unexpected. Mm -hmm. Here's one of the things that I've learned. I can't do my own marketing by myself. I have too much skin in the game. I've got too much emotion attached to my logo or my website or my about us page or my bio or whatever, right? This, this all stuff, it's almost like you should never proofread or edit your own resume. You always need somebody else to look at it. And that's that multiple perspective thing. Even I lack perspective on my own stuff. I think it's just the way that, that it is when we're in one body, right? And, and well, when you're so emotionally yeah. attached to something, you need somebody else to help you. Absolutely. I agree. And I think sometimes that, um, how can you possibly step out of yourself and see yourself objectively? You know, it's like, and every, every thought that you've ever had about yourself or your business is the, is the perspective you know. 
um, and there's no way to have something other than that. And you think you may think that everyone else has that same perspective, but they haven't been in your mind and thought every thought and written every piece of, you know, whatever the marketing material or something that's out there, you know, um, right. heard what others have said. And there's no way for people to build the same perspective you have of yourself as, you know, as somebody outside. So I bet you've helped people with a resume before Cheryl. Oh, I have. Yeah. So let me, let me just check something with you. Often your job is not like cutting them down to size and, and reducing the amount of things that they're claiming about themselves with a resume. Often it's a matter of why are you ap almost <sighs> apologizing in your tone for some of this stuff? And, and, one of your goals is to punch up the language and, and, you know, get really specific about the impact that people had. They, we've been taught and socialized that we're not supposed to brag, right? We're not right. supposed to uh, believe in ourselves so strongly and represent for ourselves in a way. And I used to think it was mostly women, but I'm seeing a lot of men struggle with this as well. So it's not always that I'm having to to tamp down their expectations of what other people think of them. A lot of times it's helping them get over imposter syndrome as they call it, mm -hmm. or just apologizing or getting over these social boundaries of, you know, of all the times that you want to hide your light under a bushel on your own website copy is not the time, <laughs> you know, and neither is a resume, you right. know, but well, it's it, it, claiming your, it's claiming what you've done. It's claiming your contribution, your, your execution, you know, what difference right. you've made, especially and, your resume. Right. And I, I did it to you when you said, what is your genius? You know, I'm like, Oh, I'm not comfortable saying it's a genius. Maybe it's a talent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, your genius is made up of your talents. There you go. There you go. Who you are authentically. We'll get there. Bring. Yeah. We're going to bring you along on that genius thing. <laughs> You've got a genius, my friend. You Thank are. you. So when I'm curious because perspective, multiple perspectives is a really, wow, if more people could have multiple perspectives, what would our world be like? Like if they could understand each other, you know, on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, uh, you know, where would we be? What have you done, if anything, is that something innate in you or have you done something to hone that skill or to help you? In, increase your or get a clearer perspective yes I have oh. as it turns out here's here's um, one really easy way to tell how you're being perceived there's a free um, digital analytics tool called Google Analytics you and most of your listeners have probably heard about it and to me it was a, simply a revelation when I first looked at it and realized before it was invented, there were the servers that serve up web pages had logs. And so if you knew what you were doing, you could go in and see what was happening, who downloaded what, and that type of thing. But Google Analytics takes it to a whole different level where you can understand so much about what's happening. So that introduced me to a whole mindset of test and learn. So you try something, you put this value proposition on a website, for example, with a certain button that says mm -hmm. register now, right? Okay. And then you see how it works. And then you watch over a period of time, how many people are clicking that button? How long are they staying on the page? Where are the people who are visiting the page coming from? Are they coming from my Facebook? Are they coming from my LinkedIn? Are they coming from my email that I sent them? When I started understanding how powerful those metrics are, that changed the game for me because then I could run little experiments where I would try mm -hmm. something and using that empathy that I'm talking about, you empathize with the user, what would they find compelling? And then you try it and then you see how it works. And then you try another experiment and another experiment. So that's one. But another one that I really wanted to uh, share with you and your listeners is <laughs> social media. Being an early adopter of social media, I used to give a, a series of talks about, is Twitter a fad? 
right? <laughs> is it a fad? Is it a BS waste of time or is it a business tool? And my strong <laughs> opinion at the time was it's a business tool if you use it as a business tool. And I, I still stand behind that. But all of those social media tactics, people worry so much about what they should say and they don't worry enough about who they're listening to and who they're interacting with and creating interaction opportunities for their folks. Interesting. So, you know, it, yeah. social media works best as a dialogue. It's social is in the name, right? Mm -hmm. Our dear friend, Jennifer Navarrete has been carrying this message for many, many years. Social media is intended to be social. It's intended to be a dialogue, not a one way marketing. Mm -hmm broadcast medium there are plenty of places that you get to broadcast a blog is one mm -hmm. but even on your podcast you want to increase engagement right? right you want you're looking at your metrics and seeing which of the topics that we've done are people most commenting about which ones are they sharing with their friends right and that's the whole game. You're going to understand more and more and more about mm -hmm. your users the longer you do your podcast. Absolutely. And, and your listeners are going to be able to shape the kinds of topics you mm -hmm. present, right? Absolutely. It'll be, it'll be very interesting because we have such a wide variety of, of topics and people. And yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see. I can't wait to see the statistics. That's yeah. right. And yeah. so just approaching it as if it's a dialogue, not just between mm -hmm. you and, and your guest, but between right. you and your audience. Absolutely. And I could see how having that additional information from Google Analytics and, and other, other avenues doing the testing, that you would get feedback to hone, you know, to get a clearer perspective and see what, what, what was resonating and what wasn't resonating. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would, yeah, that makes a, a lot of sense. And I think, you know, on a, on another, in a, on a more personal level, if we were willing to be open more frequently to list fully listening to someone else's perspective, then it doesn't mean we have to change ours. It just means that maybe there's something else to be considered, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, sitting down with your neighbor and you don't agree on politics, but then you, but you're having a civil conversation about why he or she prefers that candidate or whatever, that party. And then they listen to you about yours and what you think about it. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how often those kinds of conversations ever really occur. But <laughs> I've had some good signals lately that they occur more than we might think. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. And it's the only way that we can all come forward together. I agree. You know, we're dealing with this pandemic coronavirus thing right now. And the only way out is for us to work together, you know? So I I, I'm seeing there's, there's several silver linings in this thing. And one of them is how well people are coordinating their efforts. Mm -hmm. so and I'm agreeing there, many are, are abiding by and following the rules, which is great. You know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying not to even be judgmental with those other people. This is one of my self-development tactics is to be able to listen to people who disagree. Like I, I have sympathy for folks who are, they are completely over the quarantine. <laughs> like I have sympathy for that. I want to go out to a restaurant and I want to meet with my family and I want to get hugs from people. Me you know? too. But so what I'm learning is that we have to meet people where they are and find that common ground mm -hmm. that, that it is there to find if you look hard enough, but man, I agree. it can be hard, right? Sometimes if you're really yeah, stuck in your own perspective and can't have no room for anything else. But I think, yes, there is some common, definitely some common ground to be found. Absolutely. Yeah. But coming away from the, the pandemic and the, and the politics and, and that type of stuff for a minute. One of the tactics that I like to recommend to people that I will be happy to do for my clients for them, but if you are doing your own marketing, one of the best things you can do is interview your existing customers and walk them through your website, your social media, 
or even just mock-ups of that stuff. What if you, you're, if you're a new business and you're just starting out, you can walk them through the, the landing page copy that you're thinking about using. Just doing any kind of user testing is what we call it, user testing. But you can test a piece of paper that you printed out on your, you know, crummy little inkjet and just show it to your next door neighbor. It, any information in order to help you with that different perspective, that parallax, because uh, you have forest and trees syndrome. Right. And folks who have that hire marketers or digital agencies like mine, or you can do it yourself if you're diligent about it. And if you have the thick skin to pay attention and not interrupt people and explain to them why, <laughs> no, I wrote this, I wrote this copy so that you would think this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be defensive about it. And it's part of the reason that, that firms like mine exist because we don't have any skin in that game. You know, I'll be happy to write another version of that text for those people. But um, it's an inexpensive technique if you've got more time than, than money. Gotcha. That's, that's, help. that's a helpful idea, a really helpful so idea. You don't have to have my genius of multiple perspectives. <laughs> you can you can use other people for that. That's what they're there for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it, and it frees you up to do what your gifts are. You know, it's not that's you know that's not my gift and writing copy. Although I've written a lot of it, but anyway. So we've talked about um, like your genius and and that skill set, even if you don't like the word. And we've talked about you know kind of ways to hone it or make get feedback to get. Um, an increase your perspective since, you know, understanding multiple perspectives is your, your gift. And I'm curious to know, you know, is there a person in your life that has a, been a big influence on you in terms of helping you develop or bring out your genius? Okay. I'm going to embrace the word genius. Um, yes. <laughs> Several folks spring to mind and I, and one of those people that loves to collaborate and I love to learn and I can learn from anybody I'm working with. So I've had a whole string of them across my career, but the one that uh, springs to mind when you're asking me is this gentleman, Mike Towers. He lives in Pipe Creek, Texas, and he had a desktop publishing firm back before it was a real thing. I, went to UT Austin and I got my radio television film degree and I came out of UT waving my degree and saying, okay, where's my, where's my movie studio job? Where's my television studio job? I am ready. I am equipped. I know how to do this. And they all, all those kinds of jobs. There's so much people who want so many people who want those jobs that they are in the position of requiring people to do a free internship as oh. a stepping stone. And I had put myself through school as a secretary and I was not in a position to do any kind of free internship. So I ended up learning how to do typesetting on mainframe computers. I've never been afraid of computers and technology. So I knew how to do typesetting magazines and newspapers and all that stuff on those big machines. And then when, right when desktop publishing came out, I was typesetting on one of these mainframes the first issue of the magazine, the Mac, Macintosh computer had just come out and they had fonts and point sizes and all this stuff that I knew from typesetting. And here I was typesetting on a mainframe, this <laughs> magazine, and I knew that this was going to be big. So remember I told you I had smart friends that taught me which, which mm -hmm. trends to follow. So I went out and bought a Mac, even though I was a newlywed and I had to talk my husband into spending $5,000 on some kind of pitiful little, you know, installment plan. And, and, and it was a ridiculous amount of money to spend, but it's the best investment I've ever made. That's great. But, um, but how did Mike Towers fit in there? So Mike Towers. So I was living in Austin where technology is laying around on the ground and people willing to pay me for my knowledge of technology were everywhere. And I was so busy and I had all kinds of, of work. And then I moved to San Antonio and I felt like my feet were in cement all of a sudden. And I was having these conversations with people where they'd say, um, you know, we, we don't need to use any of that stuff 
Missy, you know, kind of thing. And um, so I ended up, and they wanted to pay me about half of what I was used to making. And I ended up talking to this guy, Mike Towers, who had just been awarded a contract to be an Apple value added reseller. And he wanted to have, uh, he, he sold Macintosh systems and all the software and the training to ad agencies and to big businesses that wanted to do their own materials, public publications. And here's what was funny about Mike. He didn't want any employees and he didn't like managing people. He was a great guy. He was really funny and warm human being, but he didn't want to manage anybody. He wanted us to manage our damn selves. And so everybody was going to be a contractor. This was before this was common, by the way. So he, I, I met him and I told him how much I wanted to make. And he was like, that's no problem. You know, so much per hour or whatever it was that I was used to getting. And then I said, okay, well, am I hired? And he said, well, if I have any work for you, <laughs> I said, well, how will I know that? And he said, well, check, check in with me occasionally. And so I had never been a contractor or a self-employed person before. So I showed up the next morning at nine and it turns out he had work for me. So eventually I learned that to the extent that I could sell what we do, he would keep me busy and he would keep my hourly pay coming. And so I sort of was able to gradually be self-employed. So I didn't have to like take a big yeah. leap and bite the bullet and decide I was going to have a business. Mm -hmm. I was eased into it by this just kind of futuristic strategic kind of guy who, you know, he, he was smart enough to hire smart, motivated, ambitious people like me who could build his business, you That's know? Great. And so he was a great lesson in leveraging the power of a team and not over managing people. So not hiring people and expecting them to just perform in this tiny little box. Mm. So he would get clients that said, Hey, can y'all teach Microsoft word? And he would just turn around and say, you want to teach Microsoft Word? I was like, okay. You know? And just <laughs> sign up for stuff. So he I'm was a big hard. influence on me. And I really like that model of a self-managing team where it's not so hierarchical. Mm -hmm. So I, as you know, I've moved in and out of working for large enterprises like USAA and the University of Texas and then, you know, the, the state government and then back you know, and I'll work for myself and have as clients all of these different sides of organizations. And I, um, I often channel Mike Towers because he found, he helped me find that sweet spot where I like working in a flat organization where my team is flat and I hire people who know how to do stuff. I don't know how to do it. I don't have to know how to code cascading style sheets or, you know, set up the server with the security certificate, all that stuff. I, I know enough to be dangerous, but what I really know is how to identify people who do know that stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, that in itself is a, is a unique gift to be able to manage people that way. I mean, cause you're, they're self-managing, but you're also managing the product and things that need to be done that have to be done in the process, which I think and is it's cool. so much more fun than trying to micromanage their little task level oh, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. They, they have such better ideas than I do. And they are so much more efficient if I get out of their damn way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd probably be much more efficient too if I'd get out of my own way. <laughs> and then that, that frees us up to be the visionary. Yes right? Exactly. We get to have our vision. And here's another thing I wanted to talk to you about, Cheryl, you, especially with the book that you wrote, which is incredible. And I've gotten so much value out of it, but Thank what you. it teaches you, at least what it, what it frees me to do. We talked about getting out of your own way. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of the things that I've learned to do with clients, especially the solopreneur, the speakers, the presenters, the coaches, the workshop, you know, facilitator type people is to go for exactly the ideal customer that they want and try and target toward that person. 
there's when you when you go independent in a business, there's this fear that takes over and you think I'm not going to have enough clients. I'm not mm -hmm. going to have enough customers. I have to appeal to everybody to make sure that I'll have enough because I need the numbers to work and I've seen marketing funnels and I have to have this giant funnel at the top and you know, it's going to whittle down to whittle down to this people who are paying mm -hmm. me for stuff. So I need the top of the funnel to be as big as possible. But a lot of my value to my clients is spent helping them dream of who they really want to serve, who their real sweet spot is, because often I find they're afraid to go for that. They either feel that they don't deserve it or that there's not enough of them or that they won't appeal to them. But the opposite is actually true. It's one of those interesting paradoxes that if you put your real self out there as authentically as possible, the people who are meant to be, this is kind of a belief system that I have, but I think it actually works what, regardless of your belief system. If you put yourself out there authentically and specifically, then the, the people that you will most connect with will be the people you connect with. If you put yourself out in some kind of watered down, generalized language or offers or you offer too many choices we talked about that earlier if you offer too many choices they're not sure which one to pick so they don't pick any right. right but if i give you an offer that is you and it's you've written a book and you want to change the world with what you do and you're on fire for it let all of that show because you will attract the people who would have gone with you anyway and then the only problem that I as a marketer have is make sure that you're visible where those people hang out. Exactly. Exactly. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, there's all of my speaker friends, my, you know, my friends that do that are coaches that are um, solopreneurs, whether they're printing t-shirts or they're, you know, whatever they might be doing that they're, you know, that they're selling, think, you know, big picture, you know, and, and, not big picture, meaning the world, you know, right. And Who's your client? Every exactly. How many exactly. times if I had a nickel for every time I heard that? No, and know. it's not everybody. I don't want everybody. I just want the ones that are an ideal match for me that are an ideal match for my energy that are ready. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to personally don't want to have to spend a little. So please don't world, please don't misunderstand me. But the truth is, is I want to work with people who are ready to get going, who are ready to, to change, they're ready to have a transformation in their lives that have had enough of what they don't want and are ready to do something differently. I have an analogy to that. And yeah. in Firecat, we call it, we don't want to be someone's first website experience. Thank you so much. <laughs> because that is so hard. They have all these expectations and the website needs to solve all their problems and get all their, you know, mm -hmm. stuff together, but they, they are incompletely thought out all of the different things. Right. And right. they have this, there's, there's a honeymoon period when you hire anybody, whether it's a air conditioning repairman, <laughs> a yard person, a plumber, yes. you know, or a marketer. There's this honeymoon period at the beginning where everybody's, you know, imagining the beautiful future with rainbows and unicorns, right? And then you get into the hard work of it, whether it's, oh, you know, your air conditioning repairman goes, man, this condenser unit is 25 <laughs> years old, you know, and then all of a sudden you don't like him quite as much, right? Or the yard person tells you you've got, you know, oak wilt or whatever, right? Or, or grub worms. Like or the something. bad news starts coming and the hard stuff and all that. And I never want to be somebody's first website. <laughs> it's just too hard. It's like, you don't want to be anybody's first girlfriend either. Yeah. Right. So what I, my sweet spot is I like somebody who has done it with another firm mm -hmm. and gone through the, you know, the everybody pain. is a human being and everybody has their limitations. And a, a lot of this is hard work that I'm going to have to cough up somehow. So one of the things is it, with somebody who's new to a website, they will think that it's my job to create all their copy and all their offers, but they don't really want to spend the time talking to me about it because they've, they're a roofing company, they're mm -hmm. a plumber, they're a, you know, medical practice or whatever that they, they've got shit to do. Right. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. So, you know, they want me to do that stuff, but I can't do it 
I can't make their copy be attracting the right people for them until I get to know them. You make a really good point. <laughs> if nobody, if, if the listeners don't take away that key point right there, then they've missed everything. I think that we should, we should edit that and put that at the beginning, you know, <laughs> yeah, because I think that's a really important part because that's true for any business, you know, any, any, any time we're trying to communicate who we are and what we do, you know, we've got to realize that we have to think that through. It's up to us as, as the business owners to do that. Yeah. yeah. And you are gifted in that area. I mean, in terms of synth- back to that idea of synthesizing, you know, kinds of things when we've worked together in the past, we, you know, and yes, you have hit me up with who exactly do you want to work with? You know, I'm like, Oh, Susan. So I know what it feels like, but you know, it's now it's not my first rodeo anymore. So I, I'm yeah. just going to get that yeah. narrowed down after um, 30 years of business this year. So we're getting that figured out. It's taking a little while. So, so tell me, um, what is next for you? What, what exciting events or offerings or whatever might be coming up that you would like to share? I will tell you about this thing that I've been nursing along for months and I keeps coming back to my awareness. We do a, a weave in and out of working for large corporations, enterprise size things with big budgets and they want to do a whole usability study. They want to run focus groups. That's really sweet work for us. But I like working with smaller organizations too. And I love helping people who are just on fire with the value that they can bring and help them bring that to light. So I am working on this workshop series that is for solopreneurs, speakers, coaches, you know, artists, that type of stuff, photographers, anybody who's like a a small business with a fairly simple need to get an offer out there and make it visible digitally. I don't do, you know, store design or any of that bricks and mortar stuff, but I do all the digital stuff. And so what I'm creating is a series of workshops with modules that basically walk you through who's your ideal customer, what are you trying to sell them? What do they need to hear and see and think and do in order to buy? And then where do those people hang out? That's why we have to dive into the customer's persona Mm -hmm. so much because in order to do digital marketing, you need to know, are they Facebook people? Are they Pinterest people? Are they LinkedIn? Are you B2B? You know, it's usually more LinkedIn, but, and Mm -hmm. different, different groups hang out in different places. And then there's a strategic partnerships aspect. So uh, several of my clients are tapping into the agile software realm. And there's a whole discipline of this test and learn agile approach to developing software and developing products. And so where do those people hang out? A lot of times they have Slack channels or they have you know, we need to really delve into who their target market is and where do they hang out and what, who are they listening to as mm. their gurus, right? So um, right. one of the things that you as a, as a speaker and a, and a published author, you want to look at people who would read my book, what other books would they read and really jam on, right? Mm-hmm. So this morning I was having a conversation with a client that was talking about, he teaches leadership leadership coaching and top level, like C level, big enterprise leadership coaching. And I encouraged him to think about as his homework, who else do these people look at as their gurus? And his sweet spot is someone like Simon Sinek. I don't know if you know him. He's the start with why guy. Mm -hmm. He's incredible, but he's a signal. But we were talking about, there's two different kinds of leadership. There's the, the ones that are kind of command and control hierarchy, I had to fight my way up the ladder and so will you. So I get to piss on all of you people (laughs) and, and it's a power game and they enjoy the power game and it's a chess game for them. And that's not his market because he wants to teach people who care about their people and want to develop Mm -hmm. their people. So he wants to almost weed out those command and control people. And so what I suggested is share things like Simon Sinek because it's a value signal to the people that you really want to reach. That's the kind you are. Mm, gotcha. That makes sense. So anyway, you asked me what my 
I, I, I delve into the weeds just like everybody. I love what I do. But <laughs> I'm, I'm coming up with a series of these workshop modules that we would work on together. And I, and I would give you a series of worksheets. And then we have a set, like there's a work ahead. You try to get it done. Mm -hmm. And then we have a live session where we walk through it together and work on it. Oh, that sounds exciting. Very and so exciting. what you end up with is a, is a full marketing strategy that includes the customer analysis, the targeting, the landing page material, the channel strategy, which social media presence is, whether you're going to use paid advertising or not. And then event strategy. Like if, if you are a speaker and you want to show up at different conferences, like what does mm -hmm. that look like? And that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what's I, next for me. Well, that's exciting. I, I am really excited. I, I can think of at least two dozen people that would be interested. Awesome. So let me know when it's ready and I will be <laughs> glad to help you put it out but because Thank I think you. that's just awesome. Terrific. Well, I'm watching what you and Kathy and your team are doing and it's, it's, a, it's a good lesson for me to see one of the things that you do so well is you're willing to just wait in there and make it happen and try things. And I really admire that about you. Oh, thank you. Well, yes, thank, I do. And some of them are successful. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully more and more successful, more frequently. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, I want to make sure that our listeners know how to get in touch with you if they want to talk with you more about your expertise and, and all that, you know, that you have to offer and so forth, or just want to pick your brain. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. We have a codified our pick your brain thing. I'll give anybody 15 minutes and you Fair can enough. go onto our website, firecatstudio.com and request your free 15 minute. And I will talk about as much of this as, as you can give me in 15 minutes and then give you a, a couple of tips of where I would go next if we were working together. And I'm more than happy to do that for people. You can tell I like to do it. Yeah, I can tell, definitely. So firecatstudio.com. And if, if somebody wanted to email you, it's all right if they email you at, at your Yes, email? Susan at firecatstudio.com. Terrific. Well, I just can't thank you enough for being our guest today. This has been so much fun. Um, it's, I really in, enjoyed it. And, you know, the number of key takeaways uh, I've gotten, this idea of, of this bigger perspective and having, looking at it from multiple perspective, not just my own, you know, like you were talking about, you know, we can't see the bark of the tree because our nose is on the tree, basically. Um, and just exploring, exploring things a little bit further. And I think one of the things I'm taking away is just from your story is don't be afraid to jump in, you know, and try something new where I was like, what's the web, you know, or, you know, I may be a little hesitant because I, I might, might need to understand something a little bit more um, before I get into it. Um, don't be frightened from it by it by any means, just give it a go and see what happens. You know, That's I mean, right. It'll all, you know, it'll either work or it won't or it won't matter. And, you know, what's to say about that? So, I mean, there's no, the risk is low, I guess, is the point. So just try, just try it, try new things, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I just, um, I want to invite our listeners, uh, if they've enjoyed today's program, please give us a five-star rating and subscribe so you can stay up to date because we have all kinds of really cool people coming up in the weeks ahead. And um, again, this has been your host, Cheryl Jones, and you can find me at simplythebestresults.com. Thanks for listening today, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.